Hello and welcome everyone. It is me, Kat, the Joyful Healer, Afro-Indigenous Medicine Woman, and I am very happy to bring to you this very special teaching on Indigenous or American Indian specifically, uh, astrology. So uh, this teaching is going to be based on the knowledge of American Indian tribes and their knowledge of astrology from their spirituality and traditional standpoints. I do want to uh, make it known that if you are drawn to this video, it is more than likely because you have an interest in astrology and in more specific in uh, American Indian or indigenous uh, spirituality and their views on the cosmos and life. So I'm glad to have you here. Now, I do want to make it known that my genetic lineage is of the American Indian tribes of the Eastern Woodlands people, and um, they are known for the Cherokee Nation as well as some others. So that is my genetic bloodline, and I also want to uh, make it known that we have both genetic and soul lineages. And my soul lineage, I resonate very deeply with those that identify with the star people and having being seated here and planted and having our ancestral uh, lineage come from the stars. And that is not only um, a common concept amongst American Indians, but as well as uh, uh, indigenous people in Africa which I also share a genetic lineage with. So my genetic lineage is with the Dogon people in Africa and the uh, Eastern Woodlands people in uh, the, Americans, um, the Americas. Um, but I'm also deeply resonating with my soul tribe that comes from the cosmos. So this is why I have been drawn or led to share this information with you. So if you would like to sit back and relax and take notes, uh, we're going to get started with the introduction here. Since archaeologists uh, have uncovered so little about this beautiful ancient race, this material represents a monumental breakthrough that provides a small opening we can peer through to perceive a small portion of the Anasazi's ancient wisdom. The general theory of the Anasazi planetary beliefs is roughly similar to present-day astrology, but only superficially. The Anasazi based their planetary concepts on knowledge received from their star ancestors. Therefore, their knowledge is naturally far more accurate and advanced than ours today. For example, the Anasazi accord one heavenly body to a whole month and call these seasons, instead of fragmenting the planet's influence between months or splitting months. Their healing techniques are correlated with the affecting planet's magnetic pull and vibratory frequency. The following planetary section is presided in pure Anasazi native way. You will notice similarities to concepts, to current concepts, but you will also notice the differences. Yet the fact of the matter remains that biological and psychological vibratory effects of the planet are real. These principles have stood the test of time. They still hold true today just as they did for the wise Anasazi of 650 AD. A noble and peaceful people a people of the stars and so it came to be that a native race in the american southwest was established and settled for a specified span of time knowledge was theirs for their blood lineage coursed in metered time with the rhythmic movements of the far constellation from whence they came wisdom was theirs the heavenly aspects naturally being a major concern in their lives were fully integrated into their daily life and dominated the people's traditional ceremonies. The Anasazi's knowledge of their world above was complete in every aspect. They lived their truth and taught their young ones how closely they were bonded to the stars and the circling planets. From birth, the children were schooled in the sacred ways and influential effects each planet had on their physiological systems, their emotions, and the land they now populated. In this way, the Anasazi greatly differed from many other Native American tribes, for they lived by the stars rather than only by the earth. The earth to them was merely a temporary abode. 
their star belief system was passed down to the surviving tribes and were incorporated into their cultural traditions, which some still practice to this day. The Anasazi people adopted star legends. Each planet, along with the sun and moon, was accorded a ruling ancestor from the tribe's beginnings. All of the notables were famous elders, for only the old ones were honored in such a sacred manner. The one exception was Earth, and it was known as the child Maru. The Anasazi was a race that lived a simple material life, for they cared not for elaborate possessions. Their physical needs were few, for they were a highly spiritual race enlightened through years of ancestral wisdom. They knew of complex concepts that modern civilization has yet to envision. And when they gathered around the nightly communal fire, talk was frequently of their distant brothers. They revered the night, for it was then that they were free to dream of home, a home they knew they'd someday return to. This had been a traditional belief that lived within the heart of the people. It had been a traditional belief that lived within the heart of the people. It would come to pass. They knew for their days on Maru had been prophesied by their ancestors. One day, the starborn tribe would return home. The following astronomy section represents how the Anasazi people perceived the heavenly bodies and their vibrational and gravitational effects on the fragile human systems, both biologically and psychologically. Wapu. Mercury. Mercury's ruling ancestor of Anasazi legend was Wapu. He was the highly respected aged elder who was a spiritual father of the people. Influential magnetic season. Anukuta, meaning moon of little changes, May and August. Influence on human personality. During the time of Wapu's strongest influence, the Anasazi wise woman, Sakuya, counseled people of her tribe who came to her with an inner restlessness. She advised them to calm their sudden onset of wanderlust by centering on the importance of family and home and to part participate more often in many community activities available to them. In this manner, their feelings of boredom would dissipate. Sakuya knew that during the season of Anukuta, many were afflicted with a critical temperament and she frequently had to be the impartial negotiator to settle family disagreements or be the wise sounding board for individuals with internal conflict. Influence on human psychology. The Anasazi leader, Yona, treated a greater number of respiratory ailments during this season of the Anukata. Kuta. Also, those clan members suffering from chronic arthritis came to see him for their aching finger joints for Wapu or Mercury's effects, the hands and arms. Yona gave special potions to tranquilize and ease tension and disorders of the central nervous system that had been aggravated by this planet's influence. For this ailment, he prescribed increased rest and a well-balanced diet. Mi Yanu, Venus. Venus's ruling ancestor of Anasazi legend was Mi Yanu. She was a beautiful ancient one who was the dream giver of the people. Influential magnetic season. Nu Rata, meaning moon of big changes, April and September. Influence on human personality. The wise one, Sakuya, found new clients to counsel during the time of Miyanu, Venus, for the planet tended to emit a calming influence that brought about a wonderful sense of belonging to the people. She saw how content most of them were. She loved the atmosphere of human love and generosity that flowed between the clan members. Yet the season of New Ratat did not leave her idle. Clients still came to her because Miyanu's calming effect frequently confused one's ability to remain strong in respect to chosen life goals. Tribe members were often overcome with a nonchalance they neither understood nor liked. Influence on human physiology. Yona, 
the healer treated an increased number of throat and thyroid complaints during Miyu News influence. He saw patients suffering from tonsillitis, laryngitis, and earaches. He knew these conditions were aggravated by the changing weather patterns and the atmospheric alterations of the seasons of Nurata, moon of big changes. Therefore, he cautioned his patients to dress appropriately, eat well, and increase the frequency of their sweat baths. Ku Sa Yu, Mars. Mars's ruling ancestor of Anasazi legend was Ku Sa Yu. He was an ancient elder who was the protector warrior of the people. Influential magnetic season, Yu Anuta, meaning talking wind moon, March. Influence on human personality. Sakuya was busy during Kusei U's talking wind moon season. Her clients mainly consisted of those tribe members who were faced with obstacles found along their life paths. Those clients were of strong constitution and needed advice on how to overcome these frustrating difficulties that appeared to hamper their forward progress. During this season of Yuanuta, the wise one was also visited by those who were themselves wise but thirsted for deeper understanding. Sakuya's upper level room was frequently filled with a circle of young and bright minds eager to gain more of their teacher's wisdom. Influence on human physiology. Yona was frequently frequented by the marketed clients of the tribe during the season of Yuanuta. These ones had birthmarks or facial moles, yet also possessed more defined bone structure and had thicker hair. These experienced increased head ailments during this season, such as headaches, sinus complaints, or ear and eye conditions. The healer knew how to treat these conditions born of the great winds of Kuseyu, March. He was knowledgeable on atmospheric pressure and treated his loyal patients accordingly. Kuaku, Jupiter. Jupiter's ruling ancestor of Anasazi legend was Kuaku. He was the ancient provider of the people. Influential magnetic season, Maitata, meaning white woman moon. December. Influence on human personality. The white woman moon of December was the season Sakaya, Sakuya loved best. It was during this Maitata season when all of the Anasazi elders gathered in the wise one's warm quarters to discuss the deeper spiritual and esoteric concepts of their star heritage. It was a wonderful time of sharing. It was regarded as a time for recounting and preserving the sacred knowledge of their distant ancestors. Kwaku, Jupiter, imparts an influence that intensifies the desire for knowledge. And so it was the wise ones naturally gathered to speak of such things when the white woman moon shone down round and cold from the December nights. Influence on human physiology. Many came to rap on the door of the lower end in room of the healer during this season. They had complaints of hip joint and liver ailments as well as sciatica. For, for Kuka affected these as well as a pituitary gland. Yona cheerfully treated all who came to his door. These patients he knew would heal well and quickly recuperate because of the white woman moon of Maitata blessed the sick in this manner. Sakuya, Saturn. Saturn's ruling ancestor of Anasazi legend was Sakuya. She was an old one who was the wise one of people. Of people. All the Anasazi wise ones were called Sakuya. Influential magnetic season. Rakuta, meaning moon of many fires. November. Influence on human personality. Those who visited Sakuya during the time of Rakuta needed advice regarding their high level of ambition. These clients were driven by an inner drive to accomplish all tasks and goals to, per to perfection. This resulted from their trait of strong personality, I'm sorry, strong, strong responsibility, which frequently caused many inner conflicts. The wise one had to counsel these ones by cautioning them to refrain from taking their responsibilities too far. For these clients most always got themselves into trouble by interfering in the personal lives of others. Influence on human physiology. 
During the season of Rakuta, the healer could expect to see an increased number of patients suffering from a variety of orthopedic ailments. These included flare-ups of normally inactive conditions such as trick knees, rheumatism, and arthritis. Yona attributed these complaints to the moon of many fires for number Bember was well known for fooling people with its damp chill that crept into rooms where the fires were not tended well. Kanu, Uranus. Uranus's ruling ancestor of Anasazi legend was Kanu. He was the ancient one who was the philosopher of the people. Influential magnetic season, Teita, meaning the wolf moon, January. Influence on human personality, Teita the wolf moon of January, would find Sakuya counseling to her tribe members who were viewed as the free thinkers. These represented a broad scope of physiological aspects, or psychology aspects rather, for they extended to the far reaches of the issue. Some clients came to the wise one with innovative ideas and concepts. They were eager to hear her opinion and sought her acceptance. Yet there were also those who came full of burning concerns that revealed their inner doubts on traditional beliefs. Some of these later ones were pained to be experiencing such open skepticism and it added to their confusion, but only for a time, for such was the influence of the planet Kanu. Influence on human physiology. The circulatory system affected those calling on Yona during the January wolf moon. Patients complained of ailments in their extremities, leg cramps, varicose veins, cold, and numb fingers. This planet's influence also brought the healer those who had accidental mishaps with their arms or legs. The old healer expected an increase of this type of ailment for the tribe members were extremely active during this season. He cautioned them against staying out in the cold for prolonged periods of time. He warned them of the short, short, he warned them to shorten the length of time they spent outside in their sky watches. Akuwa, Neptune. Neptune's ruling ancestor of Anazazi legend was Akuwa. She was an ancient one who was the magic giver of the people. Influential magnetic season. Tayanu, meaning moon of long counts. February. Influence on human personality. This was a season Sakuya expected more visitations from the younger ones especially the bright youth who were learning the tribe's esoteric knowledge. Because of their young age, they had a highly sensitive emotional nature. Their egos were fragile aspects of their blossoming personalities. Tayanu, the moon of lung counts, imparted a heightened sensitivity to these young seekers of knowledge. And the wise ones had her hands full as she counseled them. Guiding their frequently overfilled minds was a difficult task that she managed with much love and patience. Influence on human physiology. When the February season of Tayanu was upon the clan, the healer treated the lower extremities of his many patients. Foot problems were affected by this long count moon because of the cold and bitter temperatures. Frostbite was most common, but often other foot elements increased during this time, such as athlete's foot, bunions, and foot accidents. Yona cautioned his patients to change their footwear frequently, and when indoors, walk barefoot, take foot baths, and keep the feet warm. Yona, Pluto. Pluto's ruling ancestor of Anasazi legend was Yona. He was the old wise man who was the healer of the people. All the Anasazi healers were called by the name of Yona. Influential magnetic season. Mi'ita. Mi'eta. Meaning cold moon. October. Influence on human personality. Sakuya counseled an increased number of budding intellectuals during the season of Mi'ita. The October cold moon enhanced the inquisitiveness of many minds. This influence brought about a deeper comprehension of concepts for many of the tribe's members. These would be the future teachers. They would become the wise one's students 
for their keen perception and analytical abilities were evidently early on in their lives. The influence of Yona enhanced these intellectual traits to the point of making these students stand out and claim their life direction. Influence on human physiology. The healer treated genital ailments that were affected by the season of Me'eta. These included urinary and reproductive complaints. Infections were on the rise during this time, as well as the number of consultations regarding sexual matters and conception. For the cold moon time, Yan Yona prescribed all manner of potions. He was not only the tribe's healer during this season, he was also the matchmaker. Who knew? Sun. The sun's ruling ancestor of Anasazi legend was Kunu. She was the ancient one who was the eternal grandmother of the people. Influential magnetic season. Taku'apu, meaning moon of thirsty ground. July. Influence on human personality. Taku'apu was a season where the sun imparted its greatest force in Kunu, July. The wise one advised her clients against being overly optimistic, for logic and wisdom needed to be used also in their bright perceptions. Sakuya also counseled these of the clan, who were the extroverts. These required words of admonishment to temper their excessive energies and exuberance, for frequently these were sources of irritation to the other members. <laughs> That's funny. Influence on human psychology, physiology. Moon of thirsty ground in July affected the digestive system. The healer treated patients afflicted with conditions that evidence a disruption of the body's normal assimilation functions. This was not unusual for Takuapu season as the clan was extremely active and many didn't take the time to eat properly. I hope you've enjoyed this indigenous teaching and if you would like to offer a love donation, I'm going to leave the information for my cash app in the description box below and I appreciate everyone that stayed with me through the entire um, 20 plus minutes of this. I tried to make it not as drawn out as possible. If you're interested in more of this type of content on indigenous knowledge, spirituality, and uh, holistic wellness, then definitely subscribe to my channel because that's definitely what I'm all about. And click the notification buttons to make sure you are made aware of when I upload new videos. I will speak to you in the next video. Bright blessings and radical miracles to you.